I've been asked my thoughts on the Dark Knight many times at this point, and my genuine thoughts are... Oh boy, I'm scared to talk about it because I don't want to make people mad, but that means that I should say that this comes from a place of good faith, and I, in fact, rated Savage first tier in Shadowbringers as a Dark Knight, and Gunbreaker as well. Uh, primarily those, I tried all the tanks though. So I wrote my first guides on this channel, specifically on tanks, other than Paladin, oopsie, sorry, forgive me, that is coming. But currently, the Dark Knight is actually my favorite tank to heal because a well-played Dark Knight simply takes so little damage right now. But going into Endwalker, it's fallen to become my absolute last tank that I want to heal. I know, that is a huge swap. But if you listen to me from the start of this video to the finish, I think that you're gonna get a pretty clear picture why. First of all, I wanna talk about the Blackest Knight, which is an ability that I rather gleefully have spoken about at length in the past. It's an absolutely revoltingly large shield equal to 25% of the target's max HP on a low cooldown, specifically 15 seconds. That makes it 10 seconds shorter than the generic tank cooldown at 25 seconds. This ability on yourself or your co-tank is amazing. Amazing, amazing. Or on an ally who might die to like a raid wide that wasn't talked off, that's fantastic. It's an instant shield that will save their life. What makes it something I prefer over raw healing, like what the warrior has done throughout Shadowbringer, is the fact that it won't don't risk overhealing. Overhealing is something that you really want to avoid, especially as a healer, especially as a tank where you are healing too. Now, the hilarious turnaround on that is going into Endwalker, that is ironically less of a concern to me because, to be quite frank, all tanks are going to be farting out more healing than a Taco Bell bathroom. So now that I know to expect it, other than from Dark Knight, but more on that in a second, I can actually adjust my expectations. But with the Blackest Knight even today, there is one major downside if you want the quite honest truth that made me admittedly leave the Dark Knight for Gunbreaker when I was raiding Savages. I completely stopped, if I'm blunt. To use this skill you need 300 MP in reserve which then you can have the shield break and then you can use that on a dark arts that uh, you get a dark arts charge that you can then use some powerful spenders so you do get rewarded that way. Proper shield usage is rewarded. But my irritation is that this MP cost is a little prohibitive and while it was not complicated, it is not complicated be like I spent 3000 MP on this. My shield breaks. Then, for free, I get to cast in another ability, again for free, that costed 3000 MP, meaning that you had a net gain. So while this MP cost was prohibitive, and I will stick by what I said because it did push me personally off of it on Savages, this is something I experienced myself, while it wasn't complicated, it was simply just annoying to me. And people ask me to be really blunt, and that is honestly how I feel. That is not a dig at the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, as I said, right now in Shadowbringers is my number number one favorite tank to heal. I have healed them all in excess at this point and Dark Knight's my number one right now. This is not coming from a place of bad faith at all. But can you ask me to play Dark Knight and expect me to be happy at this point? No, I, I just find this irritating. This is sort of like when I talk to other healers that quit the Scholar that agree that Dissipation for Scholar is amazingly strong and like I've said many times on this channel, Dissipation is actually not that complex. This isn't brain surgery, guys. Like, we're not talking about a multiple subfile transection, or we're not talking about how to deal with <laughs> cerebral aqueducts or anything. Like, this is actually a very easy skill to use, and that's for the scholar. But the point is, they hate this skill because it's a nuisance, which honestly makes dissipation shove them away from the scholar. Which, likewise, if you're not enjoying something, it's a freaking video game. You shouldn't be playing it. So that's how I feel on Dark Knight with the Blackest Knight. So that's really how I'd summarize my feelings about playing with the Blackest Knight. And coming with us into Endwalker is the Blackest Knight in its current version with no changes. And so now what I want to talk about is the warrior's ability, since we are already talking a little bit about warrior already, at least on the screen and text, because I'm trying to cut that back for video your length. And so this skill is called Blood Wedding. This absolute degenerate of an ability reduces incoming damage by 20% for 4 seconds upon use, 10% over 8 seconds duration. So it also creates a 400 potency barrier, which yes, 400 potency is less than 25%. I am not gonna start spouting lies, it's less. But it also restores 400 potency worth of health each weapon skill stuffed into it. At a 2.5 second GCD, you can assume that this translates to a comfortable 3 swings, which is gonna be one 1,200 potency of healing. And to put that in real world tangible terms, 400 potency of healing today, spamming physical on Scholar, is equal to a heal of 23,000, which is a touch under 
percent of a squishy's health bar. So we get 1,200 potency of healing, a 400 potency barrier, which is going to equate to 1,600 HPS and a 20 percent mitigation. And this is all dropped on a 25 second cooldown and costs absolutely no MP. There's no resource management. It's press and use, no questions. And to be direct, this point alone makes me personally feel less interested in the Dark Knight. This ability alone, it costs nothing. I don't need to manage resources. I don't need to waste my cognitive load in a raid worrying about, oh my god, what if I'm at 2500 MP rather than 3k MP? Well, you're not going to be using your shield anytime soon, are you? With Blood Wedding, I know what I have, when I have it, and I unleash it without thinking. I mean, to kind of joke around with it, but this is actually something that I do think is going to actually irritate Dark Knights and Endwalker, is I don't need to deal with strings attached like, oh sir, please sage, please let my barrier break so that I can please get my proc of son of a... Why didn't that hit hard enough to break my shield? Oh my god, you used Taracol, you used Caracol, you used Numa, <laughs> mitigating all this damage. Stop adding mitigations to pad my damage. Read. I mean, I'm joking right now, but that is actually probably going to irritate the sin out of Dark Knights and Endwalker. Let's talk about the use case of when it comes to helping an ally out. And you still do get a solid shield out, it's 400 potency, and you reduce damage that they take and can heal them up a bit. <laughs> On top of that, this is the exact same thing as Blood Wedding, it's called the Sun Flash. A warrior that catches this instantly 400 shields them, like they catch like a mechanic being messed up, they instantly shield them for 400 potency of damage and probably gets one global cooldown off for 400 potency of healing. So roughly 400 and 400 is 800, which as we talked about before is under half a squishy's life, just under half a squishy's life, and if we base it off of our current numbers that we just talked about earlier. Oh yeah, this also comes with damage reduction too, so warriors can unironically become pretty big clutch savers in Endwalker. To keep this video short, Paladin and Gunbreaker also get something akin to bloodletting that they can use on itself or allies and simply it's at the same level of insane as blood wedding so really when you ask me how i feel when it comes to tbn i'm already starting to think that it's starting to look like a relic of the past let's get into my second point which is opalation and 10 percent damage reduction for 10 seconds on two charges that you get one charge back every 60 seconds sounds decent right and it is it's not bad but the problem here is that 60 seconds is double 25 seconds <laughs> it's a little over double 25 seconds i know but you need to also we two off GCDs, TBN itself, and then Oblation, just to get the exact same effect as Warrior gets from one off GCD, which is a lot more work. I mean, it's only one other OGCD. Okay, now do that in the mechanics of a savage fight that you're proccing. That's a lot. Not to mention it's now pressing two different buttons on two different keybinds. Now, you could theoretically chain this up for a longer duration, up to 20 seconds of mitigation, which is true. There is some interplay with the mechanic, but then you're stuck waiting 40 seconds for the next charge, let alone 100 seconds for the second charge to come back too. So while I do find this mechanically interesting, I'm almost viewing this as a more inconvenient way to get out the same effect. I was leading that on <laughs> to that before, but I, I'm just going to outright say it now. I think it's more inconvenient way to get the exact same effect out. But let's not forget that Warriors also comes with upfront 20% mitigation. Oblation doesn't stack, and even if it did, that's a whole 120 seconds before you get both of the charges back. Probably the closest analog that we have in game is Gunbreaker's Aurora that heals for 18 divided by 3 equals 6 ticks. So that's going to be 6 ticks at 200 healing is 1200 potency of healing. That is a very, very beautiful heal over time, which I can guarantee you that a healer will feel for sure. It's not going to overheal, it is a nice slow trickle, it's going to be very, very great. The problem is that the Gunbreaker's Heart of Corundrum, as discussed before, does damage mitigation of 30% upfront for the first 4 seconds, has a triggered burst heal that will also apply a 200 potency barrier upfront for no mana cost. I say 200 potency barrier because that is what that one ability will be putting from yourself as the Gunbreaker to the ally. That's what that little bit of text in there means. Now you can throw this heal over time effect on top and the problem is Oblation isn't even adding much. It's something baked in with no questions asked into these kits. It's actually surpassed by the mitigation in every single other tank's no cost spammable or Paladin's um, oath gauge spammable. But Paladin's oath gauge is also very separate from their MP gauge which they're chugging for their DPS rotation which makes it like they have a clear defensive versus a clear offensive. I'm going to be ending my video on talking about Living Dead which is the Dark Knight's version of tank cheese on mechanics. It can resolve tank busters, it can resolve weird raid wides, it can do amazing things like any other tank's cheese. 
but when it comes to tank cheese this is the one that gives me personally the most anxiety when healing and when playing the dark knight myself just because i have no control over it when i am playing the dark knight myself which feels horrible i am literally completely at the mercy of a healer with it and i never like that feeling i'm not trying to be offensive in any capacity i love my healers <laughs> you know i am one myself but it makes me feel as the dark knight myself like i have almost no control over the situation i resent it even on gunbreaker when i lower my hp to one i feel like i have more control simply because the ability won't kill me but <laughs> we're gonna get into that on the flip side as a healer especially feel this as a healer because this gives me a lot of anxiety because white mage is ironically enough the only healer that i don't really play that much in higher end content so to say the least and i guess it's probably pretty clear from what i just said it is my absolute least favorite cheese skill for tanks by a tremendous margin. Paladins, I can literally ignore. Gunbreakers, I might throw a regen on or let my Fey Union heal them. Actually, a use for Fey Union is trickle heals, <laughs> but I feel very <laughs> bothered, especially if they are the off tank. Actually, if you're the off tank and I don't need to worry about your HP, I will literally just let my fairy do it. Like, other healers might jump at Super Belied, but I've seen it so many times that it's like, come at my Bahamut bro with that Super Belied status. I, I don't care. Warriors, we can heal back up slowly and their super low cooldown honestly is great because it's like E12S, they have a backup for both tank busters. It's beautiful. That low cooldown, I have come to appreciate so much. But oh boy, getting to the point at hand, living dead. <laughs> You need to be healed to an equivalent of your maximum HP before the timer runs out or you die, <laughs> literally. Meaning that you almost always want to pair a Dark Knight with a White Mage's Benediction, or specifically Living Dead with White Mage's Benediction. Every single other healer has to put in significantly more effort to make it so that the Dark Knight doesn't die. Is it going to be grueling? Is it going to be agonizing? No, but you know what? It is significantly more effort and it does actually kind of suck when you miscalculate and it's just under what you expected. Like for instance, I can as a scholar or in Endwalker as a Sage, pop my shields, turn those shields into healing, pop a Fey Union or a Soteria, pop Lustrate or Drokol for a burst heal. Like, it's doable. I don't want to peddle lies saying, oh, this is impossible. It's doable. But it's, it's just, to be blunt, something that I don't really enjoy dealing with. It requires significantly more effort than literally any other tank cheese in the game. Like with Warrior, I don't need to literally heal the Warrior to 100% unless there's some big justification to do so. I can just help with my co-healer, get them to like 50% HP, and let the heal over time effects just maintain them. Obviously, certain mechanics don't allow that but the massive lion's share of mechanics in this game actually do, including in Savages. Like a warrior, if I'm blunt, I've done this where a single essential dignity when I'm unknocked ass, and then I weave in a celestial intersection. That will be mm, chef's kiss. Beautiful. I don't need to worry. Literally. <laughs> Which makes it so much more difficult when I need to do essential dignity, and then I need to do a benefit too, then I need to do another benefit too, and then it's just my heal over time with celestial intersection isn't quick enough you know what I'm getting at. It's a lot more effort. Other gripe of mine with Living Dead, which it does apply to Warriors in full, is that you can easily, during like a double tank buster like E12S, be healed too quickly. Or alternatively, um, actually Living Dead even is worse for this, because let's say that the first tank buster doesn't lower you completely to 1 HP as a Dark Knight and triggers the effect of you being dead. Okay, if the White Mage used Benediction, <laughs> I've had a lot of co-healing stuff. You know what? It's a learning experience for white mages. It's just like, but like they will use benediction on that first one. But it's like uh, living dead didn't proc that time. Like the dark knight had like 100 HP or something left. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> so they used benediction at that point. Okay, now you need to scramble to get their HP up because now you both don't have benediction. I mean, you could argue that you could heal the warrior too early. And I mean, yeah, and it would still be a little annoying. But relative, how to say it? The Warriors tank cooldown is the lowest at 240 seconds, lower than even Dark Knights, which I have been in like fights like E12S where it's just like they can use it on both tank busters, which is a blessing. But at this point, this video has gone on way longer than I had hoped. And so really what I want to summarize this with is my three points about what the Dark Knight worries me the most going into Endwalker are these. And I think that the developers will obviously balance it because the developers of 14 are honestly a blessing and so amazing. But, so like, I'm not worried on that front. It will not be an unviable tank. 
but I'd be lying if I didn't say that I had a ton of concerns from a purely gameplay mechanistic standpoint going forward in Tandwalker. These are not potency changes. Fundamentally, these are like big gameplay swoops, especially with things like Living Dead. Or like, are you gonna tack on like a 20% upfront mitigation on the Blackest Knight or make it so that the Blackest Knight has like a 50% shield for the first four seconds going into like eight seconds? I'm really curious to see how it's resolved. Now that's all for this video. Take care. This went way over time. I'm so sorry, guys.